yes sir, 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 yes
I'm separating myself now from the other goats. Uh, from everybody. From everyone. Because you, it's, it's LeBron's world, baby. Well, that's just it. He's obviously talking about Jordan. Let's not beat around a bush here. Let's not. Know? Let's not pretend it's anybody Absolutely. else. He's talking about Michael Jordan. Now, Michael Jordan's got six rings, and and I, I, I may not have had to come back against quote unquote the greatest team of all time, but to get those six rings, he had to go through people and get there. I don't know. Question hey, here. Let's let's get right down to it. Let me tell you this. And the guru, before by the time this comes out, I'm already going to post it out, you know? Because when Jordan did his move against uh, Buddy from the Utah Jazz, his famous um, shot. Yeah, that's, that's shot. when Is that when Mike said, that is when I became the greatest player of all time. Did Jordan ever say something like that, bro? Not against on Against Utah Jazz, you know, in front of everyone, right? After he made it against Byron Russell, the greatest shot, basically, of all time. You know, yeah. You know, even this Greg Greg Elo shot that made him special, right? We all remember all those multiple special shots. All of them. When did Michael once just said, "You know what? I am the greatest player of all time." Now, LeBron, come on, man. I'll bet you. I'll bet you in his heart of hearts. Jordan knows. Jordan's got to know he's the best player of all time. I'll bet you you get a few beers into him or a few cocktails into him, he might let it slip. He might be like, man, I'll take anybody, all comers, I am the best. But he's never going to say it on a damn special that's going out there. You know the thing is, and this now, now, you know, forget the candid side of things. This is why LeBron is out of my GOAT status. This is the reason exactly why. Because as a GOAT, this is your responsibility of being a GOAT is having that external humbleness, you know? You have to. That's the part of being a goat. Like, you don't need to tell people, I am the greatest of us all time. You don't need to say that because if you are the greatest of all time, your work, your resume speaks. Jaw never spoke. Kareem never spoke. None of those guys came and said, I am the greatest of all time. You know who said it? We said it. You know who said it? The base, yeah. the media. We created that. But what this guy just did, he manufactured. He is the most self-centered athlete of all time. He done a lot of great, a lot of good. Don't get it twisted. Mm -hmm. But as far as the basketball stuff itself, no, LeBron James. With that said, even a Kobe Bryant never said, I'm the greatest of all time. He called himself the Black Mamba. You guys decide who's the greatest. Now, uh, we saw a similar thing. Tom Brady this week was talking. He said he's not a stats guy. Uh, they're asking him about essentially a similar issue. Brady's like, I'm not I a stats guy. Good. Yeah, the, the, the wins are what matters exactly. to me. I don't care about the stats. He's never come out and said, yeah, I'm the greatest. You know, like he's got he's got a ring on every mm -hmm. finger. Mm -hmm. he's, he's got a lot of records. He's, he, I hate hey, to it. I, you know, hey, I would take Montana hey, every hey, time. The funny thing is, LeBron, I have to say this. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, I have okay. to say this real quick. I have to say this. Do you know when he said... We beat the greatest team of all time. That's a slap in the face. You know why? The GOAT, Tom Brady. You know why? Because he had the greatest team that also never won it of all time. Because the GOAT had the greatest team. Jordan had the greatest team before they said the Warriors had it. Right. When you are the GOAT, you have the greatest. You are the greatest. Yeah, it is the greatest are, team of all how time. How are you going to be in your reign and say you beat the greatest team of all time? How did you let that happen during your reign of kingdomship? So then the question becomes, <laughs> is he right? I mean, because that's, that's no, the base No, he's not right, man. He's is, wasted. He's not right, man. You know what he wants? He's getting exactly what he wants. He's a modern-day athlete. He's getting exactly what he wants. It's about the viewership, just like what we're doing this. He's getting what he wants. There's a branch ship. We're talking That's about That's why it. he's in L.A. He gets what he wants, LeBron. You won. You, are, you, you know how to manipulate the media. You know how to manipulate attention. You are a genius in that. The thing, that's what you, because you want to be the GOAT. Jordan didn't have to do that. You ever seen Jordan's commercial? Jordan is the one guy that don't talk. Right. Jordan's the one shrugging he don't in his talk. commercial. That's when you know the GOAT. You don't even got to say a word. You don't got to tell a story about, hey, at 18 on the Nike commercial, hey, I was, I'm already a leader. You know, this is it. Like, Jordan, you didn't have to do no, all that's that. A, yeah, that's a good point. You didn't have to that's do all that. That's a good point. You are a GOAT, LeBron. You are great. But you are the most self-centered Greatest athlete of all time. I say uh, every time, though, before, before we move on from this, I say no, uh, Jordan is the greatest of all time. And the reason you can tell, and it's very simple, if you're on the playground and you're picking from any guy, I, I'm a captain, you're a captain, I've got first go. pick, and you're on the playground, I'm taking Jordan every fucking time. And the reason is because if you don't take Jordan first, he's going to make it his mission to destroy your team in a way LeBron can't even imagine. LeBron might be a great player. LeBron might have the stats. He might be unstoppable when he gets the ball and goes inside. Michael Jordan will beat you, period. 
Like they're, they're, he will find yeah. a way to beat you. Yeah. Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time on this. So that's I, I mean. I don't know what to say on that. I, I'm with you, though. You can't fucking say it. That is that is the primary thing. If you're going to do it, you can't say it. So, all right, moving on. We got that out of the way. We got our LeBron segment. Uh, Adam Silver got us talking about him. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're all welcome. Mm-hmm. So let's move back now to the NFL guru. Before we do that, let's tell people to make sure that they can find us, uh, Trash Talk Radio, at TrashTalkRadio.com, and everywhere you can find podcasts. Head out there to uh, to Stitcher, to, uh, to iTunes, not Stitcher, to Google Play, to iTunes. Uh, Spotify. To, yeah, to Spotify. Just about anywhere you can find a podcast, you can find Trash Talk Radio. Make sure you listen. Leave us a review. Get in touch with us. Uh, tell us what you think, how it's going. Uh, tell us if you agree whether or not LeBron shouldn't be out there talking. So, uh, so Guru, uh, now let's get back to the NFL. I know you've been waiting to talk about this. I need, a take, I need to take a sip of that coffee right there real quick. Right, man. fire yourself up on this one because we got a bunch to talk about here. I want to talk, we'll get that's into, what they think. we'll get into the, uh, in, that's right, there's a nice, <laughs> we'll get into the, uh, into the games coming up in Wild Card Weekend in just a bit. But when the season ends, the drama begins in, in the NFL, man. We saw the big drama right now is the Pittsburgh oh, Steelers. Oh, I like how you like that. The big drama. The big yeah, drama with Big, big Ben ah. is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is the Pittsburgh Steelers right now. Now, Guru, anybody who's been watching Trash Talk Radio <laughs> for the past two years knows that you've been saying this is a problem coming for a long time. But this week we learned that Antonio Brown in, in this week pulled himself from the game, didn't play on purpose in a crucial game for his team. Guru, what is going on in Pittsburgh? Man, you know, sometimes we wish – you guys, please go do your research on TTI because this should be a story we've been breaking yeah. for two years. <laughs> two years, We've man. been breaking this. This is happening. But, you know, it's going on deaf ears. But now it's coming up, you know. And and this well, is... Well, man, it. winning covers a lot. It covers a lot. And, and just to give you a background a little bit, you know, the, the sources I got this, this is from a player that was a drafted, Pittsburgh Steelers drafted player from the Mike Tomlin era. I can't disclose. He's still a no, no, no. player. No, yeah, no, I can't him. disclose, but he's a former player for the Steelers Absolutely. who was drafted at Mike Tomlin and company. So this is where I got my sources and information about the dysfunctionalness of what's going on in the Pittsburgh locker room while he was there. You know, he just he told me a couple of stories that was intriguing to me, man. It was very intriguing how um, practice would start. A.B. don't do none of the, the, the regular practice drills. None of them. None of the individual drills. None of the seven-on-seven. Seven, any of that. But then they go to the team. He comes in there, pop, 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 do A.B. thing, and that's it. And he, and he was a rookie at that time. He used to be like, man, wow, just imagine as a youth seeing like, okay, this is, this is a culture. This is what it is, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like, A.B., I love A.B. A great player. You know, I love A.B. But it's something. Not their top receiver this year. It's not. There's something to say about the ego. You know, what destroys a team, a system, a, a culture, a business, anything that's supposed to be sustainable for long term. Mm-hmm. One of the number one thing as far as emotion evolved is ego. Yeah. It's ego. We see that all over. Every ego. team, it's guys get in the way. They get in their own way. Uh, I need the money. I need the money. He doesn't get the money. And it, it leads to. He got the money. He, he got, got the money. He has everything. But it's this ego. The ego, man. He don't care about winning. Is this stats guy? It's about me, me, me with AB. You know, everyone know the rhetoric. We're not the only one saying that. I'm not the only one saying that. It's a me, me, me rhetoric with AB. You know, it's just, and the crazy thing is, I get it. Because as a former player, right, think about this. When you're a football player, right, the one position, when you're, let's say in the huddle, mm-hmm. right, and when you break the huddle, who's the first person to leave? I, I don't know. The receiver. The receiver, because you got to go the furthest exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, who's farthest out from the middle of the for everything that's going on? It's receivers, all the okay. way out on the ends. Okay, then. So who's all so who's detached from what's going on? Receivers. Okay, who's gotta be isolated? Who gotta be mentally because they don't have help from nobody else? Who mentally so I get the point. Why does me me as a receiver? Because as a receiver mentality is I'm by myself. I don't need nobody else. You give me a screen, I'm gonna take this make I'm gonna make this play happen. You throw the ball up, I'm gonna make this play happen. Because the only thing about highlights is receivers. Because when the ball goes somewhere, somebody got to catch a damn ball. Yeah. It's a me, me sport. It's a me, me position. It's one of the only positions where you could be like an A-B and still be tolerable and be valuable. Because at the end of the day, really, you they put you in the side. That's why I say on defense, what we call it as a DB, they say we're in the island. Well, that is a, uh, yeah. You're, you're on the island. You're on an island. And who's the, the most flamboyant positions? Receivers and 
Yeah, and, and the cornerbacks. Exactly. And those are guys whose name we know. Exactly. Because they make sure we know it. Exactly. So, Guru, the question then becomes, uh, with, uh, with Le'Veon Bell uh, obviously not coming back to the Steelers, uh, Antonio Brown uh, requesting a <laughs> trade, uh, that's two of the big guys. Ben's getting old. What happens next in Pittsburgh? Has Tomlin lost this team, and should they lose Tomlin? What What happens wow. in the Berg, man? You know what? Tomlin at least need to be on the hot seat. I'll give him that. He deserved that. All right? The thing about Mike Tomlin, he's not an X's and O's guy. You know? He's a great leader of men. He's a motivational guy. He's on that nature, right? But now, it's about a parent. You know when you're a parent, and then all of a sudden your kids become like teenagers, when basically you hear the same rhetoric for over, over, and over? This player's been with Mike Tomlin for over almost a decade, basically. Mm-hmm. And they're hearing the same thing, so the words don't stick no more. It kind of reminds me of what the Seattle did. With, I was going to say that. We had the yeah. same problem with uh, Pete yeah. Carroll. Something got to be done because it gets to the point where he, his message don't stick to those guys. Mm-hmm. They've seen it all. They had success. They got the money. They got everything through this process. So now what could he say to them to motivate them? He lost those guys. So I'm not necessarily saying Mike Tomlin got to go, but I'm saying somebody got to go, and basically those guys will go. And yeah, gotta somebody go. got to go, mm-hmm. uh, and I think uh, I think uh, the question is going to be who goes first, Ben or Tomlin. I think uh, I don't. I, I think both of them are staying. I think it's going to be be there together. AB and um, because from the reports, Ben and Tomlin. That's the reason why AB is mad. AB is mad because the relationship between Ben and Tomlin. He said they're too close. The quarterback and coach with relationship. Defensive quarterback. Yeah. yeah. It's too close. I, they, I'm like, whoa. Uh, hello, because Tomlin is smart. To be a head say, coach yeah. and sustain your job, who do you think I'm going to be a best Antonio, friend Antonio, did you my, not know it's a quarterback <laughs> league, man? I don't know if you've been watching the game. You'd know, <laughs> be watching how you survive in this league uh, yeah. as a head coach. And, and I got to say this. As a black head coach, you better stick with that damn franchise quarterback. That's exactly Trust right, me, man. A.B., there's always an A.B. They got you in the sixth round, homie. Well, it's <laughs> <laughs> so, so are you saying my question then is, is should they blow it up? They got to. They lost that, they lost that locker room. Because yeah, they got to be, room. as a team, You the chemistry is what wins championship. Yeah, it's chemistry. Boy, you know, talent, talent gives you win games. Chemistry wins championship. Yep. And you know what? I, 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 you know, I know the guru didn't take science in school. That was not his major. But damn it, you better take on. You better have chemistry. Right. You better you're gonna, yeah, you somebody who have knows a it. Super Bowl. <laughs> Trust me. Take that chemistry, baby. So, Guru, from a, a coach who should be on the hot seat to coaches who are no longer on the seat at all. <laughs> Let's uh, let's turn our attention. It was Black Monday here in the NFL as the season ends on Sunday. Week 17 comes to a, a conclusion on, on Sunday. We see the heads roll. Mm. So we saw a bunch roll. There are now eight. As you and I sit here today, there are eight coaching vacancies uh, available in the NFL. They are the Bengals, the Dolphins, the Broncos, the Cardinals, the Bucks, the Jets, the Packers, and the Browns. Those are the uh, the coaches who were fired this year. Uh, now the Browns and the uh, and the Packers have had guys in there for the year. Uh, the rest uh, are going there. So, what do you want to start with on this one? What do you think is the the best spot here? If you're if you're a coaching if you're a coaching prospect, mm-hmm. where which of these teams do you want to go to? Tell the truth, bro. The more I look at it. I'm not like Cleveland, bro. Cleveland, right? Like, I, 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 you saw how I hesitated? I'm like, I'm am not, I really about to say this? Exactly. Like, yeah, really. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not really. But this, Cleveland looked like the most intriguing as far that as is long. crazy pants. <laughs> Longevity-wise, because I'm looking at long-term. You know, yeah. I'm looking about eight years and above. You know, but for the now, obviously, for the now, Green Bay. For the really? now, I look at Green Bay because – of a franchise quarterback. See, and I don't want nothing to do with Green Bay because I think the franchise quarterback is taking up too much of the 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 uh, cap. I think he's it's too much pressure, and you're going See, in with Aaron Rodgers. The they expect you to hey, win. When you have a franchise quarterback, you, that's the thing. You better get a math major. That's why you don't need that camp mystery major. Let me tell you because something. Because you just work with the you you get to be Carroll did this all the time. You could always get undrafted free agent. You just got to work on your scouting department. That if you really know your shit. You got a franchise quarterback, especially in the Midwest like that. You could get a lot of undrafted um, potential guys in the Midwestern state like that with Ohio State, West Coast. There's so many universities that has talent there. So you have a very 
intriguing scouting department, you'll be all right. See, but I think the problem with it, from my point of view, is that uh, their franchise quarterback got Mike McCarthy fired. 13 years, 125-77-2, and two, and a Super Bowl championship. And he's out on his ass. Uh, I don't know if I want the pressure of that job out there. Uh, and uh, I, I'm not sure Green Bay is the way pressure? to go. Yeah, every job, I hope you, your pressure is to win the Super Bowl, I hope. I would hope so. But I would imagine in Cleveland, the pressure is not necessarily Super Bowl right away. <laughs> you know what I mean? In Cleveland, you get, what, oh, what like oh six, seven God, wins. You're God. a goddamn so hero. You want to still check for a couple of years. I would like at least I would like I would like some time to warm up to the job maybe you know what I mean like I don't want to have to jump in and have it like on my head oh, right so away. So you want to get a uh, John Gruden type of ten year deal so the first couple of seasons I just blow it off happened. right so the first doesn't matter I can do whatever I <laughs> so want for the first few years. You basically say you want to have your little what, your, your freshman. What do you call that? Your freshman 30 or something. Yo, what yeah, you, right, what you basically don't care about your freshman year? Yeah, man, screw it. I just <laughs> want to blow it off. That's what I did my freshman year anyway. Uh, so now. Th- we know that the, the Browns are the most interesting here. I, I, I agree with that, and the Packers is the, the one to go to here. What do you think of the other firings here? Uh, Marvin Lewis finally out at the Bengals. Uh, I, that seems that's like it's been a know, long we, time we, coming. That's expected. That's expected. Tell you the truth, there's, there's two other um, jobs that I really like, dude. You know, you just mentioned one of them. You know, you, for right now, you know, I, I think the Bengals got a nice little lineup. Not a bad team. They got a nice, and they got a nice young core. Like, I love Joe Mixon. They got I a franchise quarterback. I, no, they don't. Oh, you don't think Dalton's the guy? Come on, man. They never even know. Come on, don't even. All right. That's right. What do you mean? You, if you come about my cut, Curzon, you talking about Andy Dalton? You I'm a, there's a value quarterback, Andy Dalton. Dalton. Yo, look, Andy Dalton and Kirk. Come on, man. Like, don't even. You have no no chance to talk about that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but they got a Joe Mixon. They got a young star. They got a star, William uh, William Jackson, at the second at the corner. I like William Jackson. They got some, you know, Genio Atkins is getting a little bit older. They got some pieces, man. They got some pieces on a little AJ Green is a stud. We know AJ Green is a stud. Of course. You know, they got they got a little bit of pieces. Like if I'm if I could find a quarterback, yeah. So the, I like the Bengals. And and another one I like and I don't want to like, but I like, I like the Jets. I really think Sammy. You know, it's not franchise. bad. There's, the Cardinals are uh, in a similar position with a young quarterback down there that might uh, that might blossom. I think Sam could blossom in, mm-hmm. in New York. I think the problem with the Jets, and I, again, I think the Jets is the kind of place where there's not a lot of pressure. You do anything good with the Jets, they're going to love you because it's been so long since anything mm-hmm. good's happened to that team. It's like the the team that I uh, that I want to avoid right now is I don't know if I would go to the Jets. I would not take the Jets job, and I would not take the Dolphins job, and I'll tell you why. It's because uh, my AFC East conspiracy and that I believe Bob Kraft has uh, photos and blackmail evidence on the owners of those teams, and they're not going to win anyway. <laughs> so those are just where coaches go to die. You know what I mean? Like that's They're not going to win. So I don't know if I would take those gigs. What do you think about the Broncos gig uh, out there? Because the problem right. out there is it's not John Vance Elwood. Joseph. It's John Elwood. That's right. why I'm staying away from. I want nothing to do with the Denver Broncos just because of John Elwood. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. I think he lost it. He never had it. He don't know how to get players to. But he he lost on the draft. He he's been missing. Let's just be honest. He's been missing on his draft picks. So yeah. at the end of the day, he's been missing on his he's, signings. He's, he's been missing not, on his he's everything. He's been missing on everything. He's not what you guys think he is. No. He made one great signing. He he brought Peyton Manning. Just one. That's all he did. Let's yeah. just be real, okay? So I'm staying away from that. But one thing I like, I like Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Dirk Cutter's uh, old job. I like Dirk Cutter. And you know what? And I'm not, no, I'm not his agent. But you know who I like for this job, man? You're going to hear this name. Jim Caldwell. Really? I like Jim. Jim took that year off from what the, the, the mistake the Lions did, obviously. You know, so Jim took the year off. Jim is always one of those guys that brings stability. When you have a hot head, because I saw what he did to Stafford. They actually were successful. They went to the play. He slowed him down a little with Jim Bob and, and company. So the thing I love about Caldwell, he's going to get you like a guy like Jameis Winston. He's going to get him to slow down a little bit. You know what I mean? He's going to get him in a, in a tempo. Basically, it's all about tempo. And he's going to, Jim always have that soft, and he's a leader of men. And he's a respectable Coach, so, so you're saying you're saying if you go down to Tampa Bay, it's not a. Do you believe in magic? No, no, it's it, it, back. It was it's Jim. That's All what right, I'm saying. That's fine. Send that check, Jim. So sure, tell your agent, man, I get two percent, baby. You about to get that job out Tampa. <laughs> One more question on these, uh, and is do any of these guys who were fired, Marvin Lewis, uh, Adam Gaze, Vance Joseph, uh, Steve Wilkes, and 
he only got one year out there in Arizona. Uh, Dirk Cutter, Todd Bowles, Mike McCarthy, Hugh Jackson. Who gets hired uh, elsewhere? Who else is going to – who are we seeing on the sidelines next year in, Adam, in New Adam Colors? Gates, Adam Gates is a really good offensive coordinator. Dirk Cutter is one of the best offensive mind in the game. He's going to get a job real easy. They're just a coordinator. He might not be a great leader of a team, but he's a hell of a coordinator. So he's a very valuable asset. You think so. these guys get head coaching jobs, though, any of them? You think Hugh Jackson gets a blow somewhere, or uh, or uh, I won't. Vance Joseph. I think Hugh Jackson got one of the worst coaching record, even though it was Cleveland. That, but now we see it's, it's, it, he got the worst. Now nah, I won't. Me personally, as a guru, I would never hire Hugh Jackson. I would hire him more as a coordinator role, but they not went, as my leader. They went five and three after he left under uh, interim coach Greg exactly. Williams. Exactly, and that's my man G Dub. And the next question is uh, for Cleveland: Do you go with Williams, or do you find a a, a big name to come in? Seems to be getting through to Baker. Uh, he's got Baker but fired I up know and he playing. Does. And you don't want that. There's two emotions. We know G Dub. We know about G Dub, man. I love my man Greg, man. But long term wise, he's a hothead, man. And I can't have a hothead leading my organization as a quarterback and a hothead leading my organization as a coach, bro. So as much as I love him, nah, man. I don't want that to Molly and my team. All right, Guru. We are running out of time here in the first segment. But before we go, you know, I got to come back to your cousin because uh, I got to ask you, Guru. Is Kirk Cousin an $84 million bust up there uh, in, uh, in, in Minnesota? This week, uh, they had a chance, win and in, they lost to the Bears, uh, and, and they are not in. It's a, this is a team that went to the, uh, to the championship game last year and, and brought in an $84 million quarterback. Your, your, star, your cousin, your, your now whoa, whoa, distant cousin. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I told you, man. Through marriage. Yeah, okay. Uh, right, my mm-hmm. bad. Yeah. But your cousin through marriage mm-hmm. uh, to come in and, and lead this team he failed miserably uh, in a lot of places this year. His uh, terrible against winning teams. Is this a bust or is this just not settled in? Oh man, you know my long distance cousin through marriage from like from the wife's best friend, uncle, right, sister, college c- roommate. Kids, yeah, yeah. So, uh, man, you know what? Who once I, walked I, my dog. I have enough data to show me, and I hate to admit it, but actually I don't, and I'm gonna admit it. Because the, the, the eye in the sky don't lie. He has no pocket awareness. There's certain things you have as a peripheral awareness as a human being, as far as situ- and, and, and also situational awareness. Some people call it street smarts when, mm-hmm. you're, when you're from the inner city. Some people call it whatever, right? Kirk Cousins don't have pocket presence and pocket awareness. And also, one thing about Kirk Cousins is he does exactly what's written, what's br- br- uh, grown up. What, whatever is written, whatever the play is, that's what he does, and that's what he, he's going to do to the T. If you ask for him to uh, adjust, you're looking at somebody that don't have the capability of adjusting. So if they tell you, uh, one, two, three, I'm going to throw the ball on this snap, Kirk, because it don't matter if the guy defender is there, because of his lack of awareness, he's going to throw it. So that's why you see also sometimes with his awareness, well, sometimes, a lot of the times, I watch the films, when he gets all the, sh- the fumbles, he's just got to step up in the pocket. Mm-hmm. He could save a lot of his stuff. He's got to step up in the pocket, and that will el- eliminate a lot of his sacks fumble. But because he had lacks that awareness and that presence, you know, and I don't know if that's a skill set you could get. because the That's the question. Get, Can he learn this going you know, forward? How you learn that is repetition because you get that, but he already had enough repetition. That's why you see a jump from a rookie. That's what they say in football. The biggest jump you make is from your first year to your second year because you have the repetition not enough. So when you come in your second year, you're like, I've seen this before. It slowed down. So, But that's when they say after your third, fourth year, when they say in football, you are what you are because you are not going to make a dramatic change. Mm-hmm. You are what you are. So Kirk Cousin, when shit hit the fan, he reverts to what he is. No pocket presence, and you know when things tighten up, things tighten up. All right, Guru, let's move on real quick and talk about uh, talk about the games coming up this weekend. We got Wild Card Weekend ahead of us. We got four games on the slate. I want to hear your opinions of these of these games coming up because we got the Colts versus the Texans uh, coming up here. Uh, we got the Colts-Texans, Seahawks-Cowboys, 
Chargers, Ravens, and then the Eagles, Bears. So I want to start with the Colts, Texans. This is round three mm. for these teams this year. Uh, Luck versus Watson, third round. The uh, the first time these two teams faced off was uh, was way back in, in week September, four. Right? Yeah. yeah, in September, uh, Houston got this one, count. thirty-seven to thirty-four, and then in week thirteen, uh, Indy uh, Indianapolis got it, twenty-four twenty-one. So they've split one-one with Indy winning the most recent. It's the ten and six Houston Texans against the uh, I'm sorry the yeah ten and six. The ten and six Indianapolis Colts <laughs> against the nine and seven Houston Texans. I wrote no no, my, no 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 the Houston Texans not they're ten and they're ten and Houston's wow. ten and six. I don't know who you like uh, in this game. Houston, <laughs> Houston. <laughs> I think Houston is eleven and five. Houston's eleven and five. five. Ten, Colts are ten and ten, six. Colts are ten and six. <laughs> so you know what? I prepped you for me- this hey, show, girl. Blue- I prepped. Hey, you remember when we the preseason, right? When we said. When I said AFC South is going to be one of the most competitive, and you laughed at me. I did. You remember? You like, ha, 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 ha. no way. <laughs> like, no way, right? And look what happened. It became. I thought the Jaguars the most... were going to run away with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we know that wasn't going to happen. I didn't even pick the freaking Jaguars. No, you man. didn't. So basically, what I'm saying is, I love this this personnel group. They know each other. It's in a conference play. Um, the one thing is, the Colts' offensive line is stepping up, and the Colts' defensive line is stepping up. The Colts' line, they're basically in December. They've been locked down. I'm talking about zoned in, locked down defense. And the Texans, personnel wise, DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, now we're going there. DeAndre Hopkins is, some might say, the best receiver in football right now. He's playing like it right, right now, now. He's 1B, you know, because I know who my favorite best receiver in football is, but he's 1B. Only a slight edge behind Mike Thomas, my, my best receiver, but DeAndre Hopkins is also the best receiver in, in the league. So I'm interested to see his who the coach going to match up with. How they're going to if they're going to mirror him, if they're going to um, double team him, if it's going to be Pierre Desir, if it's going to be Quentin Wilson, and I know they're going to have Malik Hooker over top to always be around him. So with this said, and you have Andrew Luck who got that it, and but you also have that young boy Deshaun Watson who also has that it. Yeah, man. With that it, T. Y. Hilton and company. This is going to be a knockdown drag. It's going to be a battle. I don't even know who I like in this game, but. I just can't bet against the lucky hand. I feel the same way, man. I I can't go against the lucky hand. I feel the same way. I actually, I would root for Watson in this game because I like to watch him play better, but I think this is the Colts game too. Uh, I think they got this. I think they're streaking right now. I think they look like the better team. I think Andrew Luck uh, is is playing like Andrew Luck, and and I think it's going to be tough to stop. It's because with name-wise, the, uh, the Texans have better personnel as far as the D-line with Clowney, with J.J. Watt. So you have guys that you heard of. But the Colts, you know, have guys that you never heard of. From Muhammad over there, uh, from my boy Toure and company over there. Absolutely. So shout out. Yeah, shout out. And Darius Leonard, you have guys you never heard of over there in the Colts that are players, that are dogs. Yeah. You know? So I'm interested to see those guys first time in the, in the playoff, um, how they're going to react. I'm I- interested. But with, when you have luck on your side... When you have luck on your side, Houston, we got a problem. <laughs> I like that. I'll tell you, mine's much simpler. I'm a, uh, I'm, I'm back in Frank Reich. Uh, uh-huh. uh, that's it's real simple for here. All right, let's move on to the uh, the Seahawks Cowboys. Now, Guru, you were saying earlier these teams are like identical twins of each other, and I said, you know, except for the fact that the Seahawks have a quarterback that I would trust. What are you seeing in this game? It's that's- in Dallas. These teams matched up once earlier in the year, week three. See, uh, Seattle was 0-2, came back to win this one, 24-13 in Seattle. 10-6 Seahawks, 10-6 Cowboys. We we uh we know how you feel, Guru. So one thing you guys going to know about the Guru, and everybody knows, he hates the Cowboys. Hey, but will they win the game? One thing else you got to know about the Cowboys, I'm going to make it easy, simple and easy. This game, the Cowboys are just like every freshman that goes to Kentucky and play basketball. Every freshman that goes to Duke and play basketball. I like where this is going. The Cowboys are one and done. I love where that's you know going. What I'm saying? They are one and done. And the guru is going to stamp that. You know why? Very simple. They're going against sing, a team sing, well, a beam. that does exactly, did an exact replica, mirror image, same defensive as far as cover three scheme, same scheme set. In fact, they even got the same coach over there. I used to coach for the for the Seahawks. Offensively, same concept as far as run, run, run. And the main difference is the Seattle Seahawks system. Dallas took their system and tried to mimic. The Seahawks created a system. They know the system better. And meaning Russell Wilson, I've seen 
cover three in practice longer than Dak has. And I see the Seahawks taking it. And one more thing I want to add. Of all the NFC teams in the playoff, of all the quarterbacks, other than Drew Brees, who Play won the auction. Super Bowl in like 2000, before Facebook, it came in existence. <laughs> right. Before YouTube. I don't even count that. But Russell Wilson is the only quarterback with a Super Bowl ring that's in the playoff, other than Drew Brees. And, uh, and, uh, and the NFC. And the NFC. Okay. Yeah, just in the well, NFC. Nick Foles has one. Uh, uh, and uh, I just uh, thought I'd mention that. <laughs> mention uh, that going. We'll get it there. I'm taking this one. Oh, I'm, the backup plan. You look at it. The I'll best forget. backup yeah. ever. Uh, I'm taking. Uh, I'm taking the Seahawks in this one, and it's because I like Russell Wilson. I think. That's uh, it. I think you got to You got to put it on him. He's a. He's a better quarterback. He scrape it out in the dirt. He'll find a way. You find uh, a way. All right. So now let's move over to your your preseason Super Bowl pick, the uh, the Los Angeles San Diego Chargers. One of the best teams in football. They've now uh, the Chiefs won the division. They've dropped to the five seed. They're headed to Baltimore to take on Charm City, woo, baby. Lamar Jackson and the uh, the streaking Baltimore Ravens. That's a different team than we've seen. He's another scrambler. He's a guy that's going there. What do you think, Philip Rivers and the Chargers, uh, or do you like or do you like Jackson Ooh, and the and the Ravens? Man, that's so Raven, man. Isn't that <laughs> that's so Ravens? Always playing that defense. Isn't that typical Ravens? <laughs> It's so hard. This is similar like to me. It seemed like the sign of a setup, beat down Philip Rivers six interception game. And I, it's just so Ravens to me. Cause I I know the I know Baltimore. I've been to Baltimore. I, it's right down the street from the city. So I know about Charm City. They you know, don't let them fool you. It ain't no charming out there. They're a little bit charm, but bro, I, I there's just someone from a West Coast team uh, take coming your lunch to money. East Coast team. Weather and they call and from San Diego. I don't think the LA right now. From the San Diego, the Los Angeles San Diego Chargers. Dude, this seemed like a setup, don't it? It does. It. You know what? It's the kind of thing that I I would not want to be the Chargers going into the city. That they've had such a great season and look like such a, a contender. They might get jumped here, man. In uh, in Baltimore, they head down there. This is a strong defense. This is a quarterback that scrambles. Hey, anything is though. When it's time for that payoff. I'm always going to go with the guy that's been there. I don't care if it's the road. I don't care if it's the way. Because I've seen him. I've seen his composure. I've seen him in the win. I've seen him in the loss. And I know what we're going to get out of. So with that said, if Phillip Rivers was going against, I'm not going to lie, if it was Joe Flacco right now, if they said Joe Flacco is the starting quarterback, I would be like, the Ravens are going to win this game. What? That is nuts. But because it's run, run, Lamar, Run Lamar Gump. <laughs> That's the only reason why I see an experienced team, an experienced quarterback like Phillip Rivers is going to overtake it. They're going to run Baltimore down, and they're going to make enough plays that they're going to jump enough that Lamar Jackson is going to be put in a situation. And I see Baltimore had a great season. They have something to build on. Uh, they, 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 what, what's the word they say? They, they. They peaked. You think they peaked already they this over, season? No, they overachieved. Oh, absolutely. They are. They are they punching way above their they weight. Uh, I'm with you. I like. Uh, I like the Chargers in this one. I've liked the Chargers uh, a lot of this year, mm-hmm. and uh, and I think if it comes down to uh, at the end of the game, the ball in uh, in in his hands, uh, Rivers can win the game. I don't. I don't know if Jackson can. And uh, if I'm a betting man, and and sometimes I am, I'm taking. I'm taking the Los Angeles San Diego Chargers in this one. Absolutely. All right. Final game of the weekend to talk about is uh, the one I'm actually the most concerned about, Guru. That is Same the dude. Philadelphia Eagles versus the Chicago Bears. Now, the fact that the Philadelphia Eagles are in the playoffs to begin with is completely insane. It is ludicrous. I wrote them off. You wrote them off. The world wrote them off. The only people who didn't write them off are the Philadelphia Eagles and Nick Foles. Nick Foles, once again, put this team on his back, beat the Rams, moved, (laughs) went forward. Now they have made the playoffs getting in. Not only that, he got hurt in this game. I'm going to, last week I said that the, uh, the Eagles had the two best quarterbacks in the (laughs) NFC East. I think they got the three best quarterbacks in the (laughs) NFC East with a Sudfeld backing them up, but they're going against the bears. And I've said all year, not all year, but I said at the end of the season here, the only NFC team that, that you can believe in is Chicago at this point and Nick Foles. So I'm clashing here and I'm obviously, I'm obviously taking you know, the Eagles don't have a chance. So I'm picking the Eagles in this one, and I'm taking Nick Foles and the Eagles to win this game. Guru, what do you see in this one? You know what I see about this game? 
if you could check back what's been going on right now. You saw this how the playoff structure is funny. It seemed like all the experienced quarterback are playing on the road versus the first time playoff the quarterback. Kid, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like it's it, it, the way it's drawn. It's drawn for the road team to win, in a sense, for the first time in a, in a long time as far as the wild card because you're going against all veterans versus once again. You got the veteran Nick Foles, been there, done that recently. Yeah, last year. Versus a young cat like Mitch with a, uh, which with Mitch and Nagy and company. But it's interesting because that's the same coaching tree. It's another identical twin, but the difference is this twin is a little bit better. I love the Bears. Don't get it twisted. I love what they did. They're the epitome of an overachieving team. You know, of all the most overachieving team in the NFL this year. The Chicago Bears were the most overachieving team of this year. Just like the Vikings are the most underachieving. Well, it might be Green Bay. One of those clowns. I think it's, I think it's definitely the Vikings. Oh, of course, because yeah. it's an $80 million. Absolutely. The pressure was yeah. just so and much higher. The only reason why, because, yeah. the, because Aaron Rodgers got a Super Bowl. Took away that Super Bowl, that would have been a $130-something million dollar problem. That's right? exactly right. <laughs> but anyways, um, I love the Bears. I know their defense. I know all that shebang. But when it comes down to it, Mitch, Mitch, Mitch got to make plays. And I know Nagy makes a great – I mean, he comes up with a great play, calling great plays, you know, great schemes going to set up. But this time around, bro, they got a man called Fletcher Cox, bro. Yeah, they do. Oh, my gosh, bro. Oh, they got Malcolm Jenkins, bro. They got some ballers on that D-line. They got Michael Bennett, bro. Michael Bennett coming, too. Bro, the difference is the Bears might have the best player in Khalil Mack on defense, but damn it. The Eagles got a rack of dogs on that deal. I'm talking about some hyenas, boy. So now here's the other question here is that the Bears essentially had a choice in this one. Uh, if they let their foot off the gas because they're playing the Vikings, Vikings. they could have played the Vikings and, this week. And you know what? Did they make the right choice? They made the wrong choice. Really? They made the wrong choice because they already seen the deficiency of Kirk Cousins. Kirk is going to throw it to him. <laughs> they seen that. They already seen that. Why didn't you just – that's the one yeah. mistake. You Great point you made. That's why, Coach Nagy, you are smarter yourself. This is what Belichick would have done. This is the difference between a Belichick franchise right. and a young rookie franchise. You know what I mean? A Belichick would strategically see like home. You know what? I'm going to have a chance to play this team in my home the very next week. My home. I'm going to rest my guys because they have to play their guys. Now you're just giving more fatigue. All that, and they got to travel. Like he didn't, That's the difference between him being a one and done, just like every Kansas, every Kentucky, every damn Duke, every North Carolina, Zion. Play, every basketball player that's in the top 10 of the ranking. That's exactly what's going to happen to the Chicago Bears. They're going to be one and done. Well, these two teams did not match up during the season. I, uh, I actually think that the Bears made the right choice here, and my reasoning is this. Uh, the Essentially playing the Vikings, first of all, I would not take my foot off the gas. I think resting your players in the final week is a recipe for for uh, getting a little lazy and a little lackadaisical mm-hmm. and, and possibly getting chumped. I think the biggest recipe for getting chumped, though, is playing a division rival for the third time uh, in the year. They've seen your they've seen your tricks, they've seen your plays. Anything can happen in a division rival game. You bring the Vikings in after after for the third game of the year. Man, that's that's a recipe for a chumping, if you ask me. But, so, about, but you know who you're bringing in? You're bringing in the Eagles, and it's not, not only that. The champs. The same coaching tree. That's the same, basically the same. You basically, just like I told you to cover through the Dallas and run, you're basically telling me, I'm, does Peterson knows what the hell. You're, doing, you're trying to mimic me. You're trying to mimic what I do. Do you want to play a team that you're trying to make? Like, why would you want to play that team? <laughs> All right, Guru, you're getting a little, you're getting a little verklempt there, buddy. You're getting a little worked up. Why don't we take a quick break here? Uh, and we'll go, uh, we'll go to segment two. Uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back in segment two. And we'll, uh, we'll do the call-outs and shout-outs from the final week in the NFL, week 17, with a final look back. We'll look forward with our Bets with Ben segment with Ben Carey from thecurrencykings.com. We'll do a little bit of a two-minute drill here at the end, and then we'll get on out of here. What do you say? Yeah, Trash Talk Radio. Trash Talk Radio. TTR.